The Disney franchise is one of the most successful corporations in the entire world. Beloved for its family friendly stories of love and friendship, it has been swooning the hearts of millions of people for a hundred years. But what if I told you that there was a not so sweet side to the beloved Disney stories? Maybe even an evil side? Well, get ready to potentially have your childhood ruined, cause today I'm counting down the top 10 evil Disney movies based on real events. Starting us off here at number 10. 10 is The Jungle Book. Based on Rudyard Kipling's novel of the same title, the story was taken on by Disney and adapted into several beloved films about self discovery and the harmony of man and nature. But few people, including myself until today, knew the true story of the wolf boy Mowgli. In 1867, a young boy was discovered by a group of hunters hiding out in a cave. The boy spoke no human language, nor did he understand human behavior, and they quickly figured out he'd lived in the jungle for his whole life up until then, being raised by wolves and believing that he too was one. They brought the boy back to a nearby orphanage where missionaries named him Dina Sanchar, meaning Saturday, which was the day he was brought to them. The boy, having never interacted with humans before, mimicked the behavior of an animal, walking on all fours, only eating raw meat, gnawing on bones to sharpen his teeth, and in an attempt to communicate with the missionaries, he would growl or howl like a wolf. They began trying to train the boy into a human lifestyle, trying to teach him how to walk on two feet and speak, but he never truly acclimated. Later in life, he eventually wore clothes, walked as a human, smoked cigarettes, and came to understand language in his own way, but he never learned to speak it himself. Next up at number 9 is The Hunchback of Notre Dame. This movie is already on the darker side of the Disney canon, and although much of the story is simply an animated retelling of Victor Hugo's fictitious tale, there is one person who was actually real. Quasimodo. In a memoir by British sculptor Henry Sibson, he describes the time he spent working in Paris repairing the Notre Dame in the 1820s. But after getting fired from that job, he was sent to work outside the city and it was there he met a man named M. Trahan. Trahan was the lead carver on his crew whose boss, while never mentioned by name, was in fact humpbacked and was almost exclusively referred to as the Hunchback. The Hunchback was a government sculptor who most kept to himself, but he and Trahan operated in the area of Paris where Victor Hugo lived. Hugo closely monitored the restoration of the Notre Dame and likely knew the hunchback, if not personally, at least watched him from a distance. And not long after, he published The Hunchback of Notre Dame in 1831, and well, the rest is history. Coming in at number 8 is Newsies. Before the turn of the 20th century, a huge strike nearly took down the newspaper conglomerate of New York City. At the time, the newspapers were handed out by young men called Newsies. These boys were head to head with the rich moguls William Hearst and Joseph Pulitzer, who owned the two largest newspapers in the city. Now, to be clear, when I say boys, I mean some as young as seven. The big problem was that at the time, the system required the Newsies to pre purchase their newspapers for the day. A stack of 100 papers cost 50 cents and then they would sell them for a penny each. But if they didn't sell them all, well, too bad. The company wouldn't buy them back. Things only got worse once the Spanish American War broke out in 1898 and publishers began charging 60 cents a stack for the same 100 papers. Once the war ended, most other publishers lowered their prices back down, but not Hearst and Pulitzer. The newsies were struggling to compete with the other companies' lower prices and and then it all came to a head when they found out their high priced bundles weren't even a hundred. They were totally being scammed. So in 1999, the boys began a strike against their cash cow bosses and marched all over New York City to spread awareness of their cause. The boys gained so much public sympathy that in just two weeks of striking, the moguls lost so much money, they agreed to speak with the newsies and come to an arrangement. Eventually, they settled on maintaining the 60 cents price, but that the publishers would buy back all unsold copies at the end of the day. Against all odds, the ragtag boys went out against the rich and powerful. So maybe not an evil story but a true one nonetheless. Coming in at number 7 is Snow White. The story of Snow White has been passed down over hundreds of generations. Most know by now that Walt Disney himself didn't come up with the tale, and that it was first transcribed by Brothers Grimm in the 1800s. But apparently, it could go back even further than that. In 1994, a German historian named Eckerd Sander wrote a highly controversial paper that claimed he had discovered evidence that the story was actually inspired by a true 
new event from the 16th century. Apparently, the real life princess was actually a German countess named Margaret von Waldeck. Margaret, too, had an evil stepmother who, at just 16, forced her out of the house and away from her family. But while away, she met a young and handsome prince, and the pair fell madly in love. But Margaret was forbidden from marrying him. Now, I wasn't able to track down exactly why she was forbidden, but I'm gonna guess and say it had something to do with money. Tragically, at the age of 21, Margaret was poisoned by the hands of her wicked stepmother in order to keep her from marrying the handsome prince. And I mean, minus the whole death part, it's not actually that far from the Disney retelling of the fairy tale. Hercules. I know what you're gonna say, the story of Hercules is based on Greek mythology, and you're not wrong. But I still added it because the actual mythology of Hercules and Megara is shockingly darker than the story portrayed on the animated movie. So in the movie, Hercules is the half-human, half-god that falls in love with sarcastic and lovable Megara. Megara is enslaved by Hades, and Hercules eventually frees her, and they live happily ever after. Well, in the original myth, Megara is actually the eldest daughter of King Creon and Princess of Thebes. And the two don't actually fall in love, but rather she is given as a gift to Hercules, or rather Heracles, after he saved Thebes single-handedly from the minions. Over time, Megara bears him several sons, but things go south fast after Hera sends Heracles into an unstoppable madness. You see, Hera deeply hated Heracles, for he is but a reminder of all the affairs committed by her son, also brother, Zeus, and Heracles has some pretty bad mommy issues about this, even though she was not in fact his mother. In his fit of madness, he kills his entire family, and riddled with guilt, he enslaves himself to his cousin Eurystheus, and performs the twelve of labors in an attempt to atone for his sins. So, I mean, just a few changes from the Disney movie, right? Tarzan. As it turns out, Mowgli was not the only Disney character based on a real life jungle man. The story of Tarzan actually comes from an English nobleman. His name was Lord William Charles Midland, and he was the 14th Earl of Streatham. But one day he thought his life was over after being stranded and shipwrecked on the jungle coast of Africa in 1868. On his very first venture into the jungle, William stumbled upon a colony of apes. Of course, they had never seen a white human before, but shockingly, instead of running from him, they seemed curious and chattered excitedly amongst themselves. He says after their initial surprise of their new company subsided, they began to accept him as one of their own, offering nuts and roots for him to eat. The young boy, starved, accepted their offerings with a smile, but as his body wasn't built to eat such things, it didn't sit well with him. Quote, I was terribly ill afterwards, and the apes appeared to understand this. One ancient female hunched her way over to me and cradled me in her arms. He spent the next 15 years living amongst the apes as one of them, and while he never communicated with them in their own language, he did learn how to sort of sign in a way to relay information back and forth. Eventually, after 15 years, he managed to make his way back to London and wrote about his time with the apes, inspiring the story of Tarzan. Coming in at number 4 is Rapunzel. Back in the year 1275 CE, a man named named Jacobus de Voragine recorded a story of a young woman named Barbara from Italy. Barbara was a very beautiful girl with a rebellious spirit, and she lived with her powerful and rich father, Dioscorus. Men were always lining up to woo his daughter, many of them princes, but he made the rule that all suitors could only meet her after an interview with him. One day her father had to leave town for a business trip, but after an argument with her father about wanting to be more independent, he locked Barbara up into a tower to keep her from meeting up with suitors behind his back. Townspeople had been instructed to deliver food to her as she wasn't permitted to leave, and one day someone left a book explaining Christianity. What you have to understand is that at the time, Christianity was viewed as a religious cult that Romans were trying to prevent from taking over. Not only that, it was also straight up illegal, and you could be killed for converting to it. Still, Barbara read the book and fell in love with Christianity and decided she wanted to convert. She used her beauty to convince the nearby workers to send over a doctor, who was actually a priest in disguise, and in the biggest act of rebellion she could do at the time, she was baptized. When her father came home, he discovered what his daughter had done and reported her to the authorities. She was then dragged by her long hair to the town square where she was beaten, tortured, and burned by her community before finally her own father chopped off her head with a sword. I mean, what? Coming in at number three is Dumbo. I have to admit, 
This one hit me extra hard because as a kid I was obsessed with this movie. But I hate to admit that I'm not shocked to have learned that an animal was abused while at the circus 150 years ago. The movie Dumbo is based on a real life elephant, Jumbo, who arrived at the London Zoo in 1865. For starters, before he arrived in London, he was captured by hunters and separated from his mother, who he watched be slaughtered for her tusks. That they then took the terrified thing to a completely new continent and stuck him in a cage to be gawked at by the public who routinely threw coins or other things at him. Soon he was becoming so aggressive, I mean gee I wonder why, that they decided to sell him to P.T. Barnum's traveling circus in the US. On his now second cross continental journey he became so anxious that they began providing him with a daily allotment of whiskey to calm him down. But all this did of course was get the poor animal addicted to alcohol. Alone and confused, Jumbo began grinding down his tusks on the bars of the cage, and it seems Barnum Barnum's fix for most of the elephant's ailments and stressors was to keep pouring alcohol down his throat. Soon enough, the poor animal was almost always sedated, often knocking back bottles of champagne, port, whiskey, and even biscuits soaked in booze. Further, he was used as an attraction that visitors could ride, so much so that his joints began deteriorating at a rate far beyond his actual age. He died young after an accidental hit by a freight train, which likely due to his rapidly deteriorating health, caused enough internal bleeding to send him over the edge. Edge. But even after his death, they wouldn't let him rest. He was put up for a display in the New York City's gala for the next four years and paraded around as a roadside attraction for the masses. Coming in at number two, Pocahontas. It probably comes as no surprise that the 1995 classic strayed wildly from the harsh reality of its dark history. In the Disney movie, the settler John Smith comes to the New World seeking gold and to settle on the land, but ends up falling in love with Pocahontas and coming together to bring peace amongst the settlers and the Powhatans. While the movie touches on the tensions between the Powhatan people and the white colonizers, it's a very sanitized version of the real events. First of all, her name wasn't even Pocahontas. It was Madawaka. Pocahontas was only a nickname meeting Naughty One or Little Brat. Next, in Disney she was portrayed as a vague young adult age, but truthfully young Madawaka was just 10 years old at the time John Smith came to colonize her family's land. While she did save his life, Disney left out the entire part of what happened after. Madawaka was kidnapped by the white settlers and held hostage while being forced to convert to Christianity. She was then forced into marrying John Smith, a man who was more than twice her age as a minor, by the way, and promptly given a proper English name, Rebecca. From there, she was plopped into English society, clueless and afraid, and paraded around like some kind of proof that indigenous people could be civilized and melt into European society. Then, at the mere age of 20, she died in England far from her family and the life she loved. So sad. And finally, at number one is Beauty and the Beast. Back in the 1500s, there was a man named Pedro Gonzalez. Pedro was born with an incredibly rare Ambra syndrome, a condition where you are covered completely in hair, and was shunned and outlawed by his community as a freak. At the age of 10, the Venetian ambassador kidnapped him and then gifted him to King Henry II as a slave. At the time, owning outlandish people that were different from high society was a point of pride and upped your status among the court. Sadly, as he had been abandoned in his early years, he didn't speak very well and was essentially treated like a pet. Pedro was trapped in a cage in the king's court and fed raw meat to keep him alive. Then one day he was brought to the doctor and terrified the boy finally told him his name. But the king decided that it was far too Spanish sounding and changed it to Petrus Gonsalves. Petrus lived like that for years, treated like an animal to please high society, until one day Henry died and the queen decided she wanted to try a little experiment on her late husband's gift. The queen realized that if one one hairy man was valuable to the court, then owning lots would only up her ranks in society. So she arranged a marriage with a local servant girl named Catherine. Allegedly, Catherine was chosen for her distinct beauty, but had no clue that the queen was marrying her off to Petrus until she saw him on their wedding day. The couple had several children, four of which were born with the same condition, and eventually given as gifts to other high ruling members of the court, just as their father had been. In the end, there wasn't even a record of his death as he was considered too animal-like for a Christian burial. Thanks so much for watching today guys. I hope you liked this video. If you know of any other crazy Disney stories, make sure to leave them in the comments below and I'll catch you next time.